Erica, you've written a book called 18 Years in Hell. How does hell look like? Yeah, um, hell is another world. Just like, uh, you know, it's difficult to say that you've been to, to, the, to the entire place. Just like we are on this planet, yes, we know this is a world, but you can't say that you have traveled the whole world. So um, there are so many things that are, are hidden also in hell. But the deeper you go, the more, the more you get to know their secrets. So there is a point in life where you get, if, if, you're, dead, if you're initiated into the kingdom of Satan, there is a point where you go and you know so much and it's difficult for you to come back. It only takes the grace of God. So in that world called hell, they are prison. It's not a beautiful place and serving the devil is not a good experience. But it is a world and it is a very busy world. There are places where there are industries, factories uh, that are manufacturing things that people use here on this planet. And uh, I got to know about that place when I was now 16 years old. Uh, in serving the devil. I served Satan for, oh, I worked for the enemy for 18 years. I don't say serving, but because I was initiated, I worked with them for 18 years, and they were revealing so many secrets to me, because the enemy, looking at the generation I was coming from, I was a fourth generation of sorcerers, and all my grand, great-grandparents were faithful in the kingdom of darkness. So, because of that, the devil... Uh, easily trusted me and he revealed to me so many secrets about the kingdom of darkness. So the first place I arrived in when I had been initiated was where the throne of Lucifer is. And that throne is built in form of a pyramid. And just above that pyramid is an eye. People, uh, people the, the signs that you see on a dollar, that one dollar bill, it, it's, they are showing you that even money is controlled. The people who print the money are the people who influence the world. Uh, many times we think that it is the politicians, the people that we vote into power. But a person who cannot print money has no right to put someone in power. It's the person who prints the money that decides who will rule in which nation and which agendas they are supposed to impose on every nation. So it is, it is deep. It is deeper than the knowledge that we get in school. That's why <laughs> even if we go to school, there is, you feel like there is something missing. You have tried to get a, a master's, a PhD, a doctorate, but still in there, there is something missing. There's something that they are not telling you about money, about uh, politics, about the real world. Who is controlling this world? This world is, is being controlled by spiritual beings. That's why the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So getting to the, uh, to the kingdom of darkness, after we entered those seven gates, and I was in hell, this place is full of darkness, but the only light that is available is just enough for you to see what you're doing and where you're going. That is the place where I arrived. And I was on a red carpet, uh, and in front of me was Lucifer. As I described to you how he looks like, you see, when God gives you a gift, he does not take it away from you. So, if, is he black? Is he white? You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, one of the things that really upset me now when I was coming face to face with reality, the devil that we know from Hollywood and all these other movies, you know, when they display the devil, they show him black with horns, looking like Spider-Man, something red, or, you know, that is not the fact. The reality is Lucifer is pale in color because uh, before he fell from, from the kingdom of God, he was bright like light. He used to shine. He used to shine like the precious stones that were built in him. And he used to walk on, on fire. He was, he was bright. That's why he was called Lucifer because Lucifer meant light bearer. Now when he fell, he became pale, but still with that pale gray color, you can be able to see the light shining, but now it is dim. It, he's not in the glory that he was in before. That's why you see a musician singing, shine bright like a diamond. Beautiful, like a diamond is in the sky. This musician is worshipping Lucifer because they have seen him. 
they go to, to where he is. A musician says, you are a beautiful liar. You know, they are singing, they are worshipping the devil. Those are devil worshippers. That's why they tell you that when they are coming to perform, a spirit takes over. Uh, Beyonce said openly that there is a spirit called Sasha Fears that takes over every time she goes on stage to perform. It is not them. They have sold their souls to the devil. And now, so let's stay there. So the guy is pale. Yeah, so... Um, and does he have wings? Yes, he has wings, but... Is many, he tall, short, fat, muscular, <laughs> yes. biceps, cubes? An angels, are, are, they have a bigger form of body compared to human beings. They are, they are gigantic. And uh, they, they are, the kind of body that uh, Lucifer has is the kind of body that cannot die because it is only God who has power over that kind of body. It is like the soul, our soul. So if Lucifer had power to, to commit suicide, he would have because the way he's hated by the, by the whole world, even those that are serving him, they are serving him because they have been blinded and fooled. But anyone who comes to their senses hates Lucifer. So the kind of bodies that they have, it is only God that has power over those kinds of bodies. So what they do, because they know they cannot control what they have, they cannot get rid of their bodies, and they know that they have been destined for, for destruction, there is a lake of fire. You know, when we talk about hell, what comes into people's mind is that lake of fire. But the Bible talks about hell and Satan and everyone that is in hell being thrown in the lake of fire as the second death. Mm -hmm. So I was also able to have a glimpse of that lake of fire. Because when I arrived in hell, the first thing that came into my mind was, I am in fire. I'm, going, I'm supposed to be burning right now. L let me ask, how did you arrive? Were you in the body or how did you arrive? Now, the first time I, I went to hell, I told you I was initiated through a musician, a secular artist in our country by the names of Chameleon. So we went to, to that island on Lake, on Lake Victoria and when we went there, we traveled through a fish. And I, I was explaining to you in the first service that this fish is a kind of fish like Jonah also traveled into, stayed into for three days because it's difficult to explain spiritual things in the physical world. It's very difficult. But at least that is close to what I was in. And uh, when, that, when that fish spat us, Chameleon now was physically in the fish and there were some other uh, business people, people of different uh, uh, classes, and they had gone to the devil for power, for success, for fame. People go under the water. You know, people think that there is not, you know, you've been hearing people who say that they go under the water for power. There are people who go there in reality. There is a marine kingdom. The devil also has built a kingdom under the water. So when we went that, that fish spat us and we entered into seven gates. And in, when these gates were opening, that was now the first time I was now seeing demons. Because there is a difference between demons and fallen angels. Now these demons that uh, I saw were serving the fallen angels. That's why in, in most cases when we are doing deliverance, you rarely cast out a fallen angel. You cast out the demons because the demons are working for the devil and the devil is one of the fallen angels so if they fail to fulfill a mission and they are sent back the the fallen angels torture those demons they are punished they don't want to go back because they know where they're going they are going to be punished they are also sent on missions so the, that's why you see when jesus was casting out those demons from the, the man who had legion they begged him rather to cast them into into pigs because they never wanted to go back there where there is suffering. So just like the demons are also tortured, even the people who are serving the devil, when they fail to fulfill a mission, they are also tortured. Some of them are killed. In the kingdom of darkness, it is survival for the fittest. Like no one has security. Even me, when I was a high-level sorcerer, by eight, I, I did not tell you that I was controlling the, the principalities of eastern Uganda. And... There I was high, I was a big sorcerer. Because uh, even uh, when it comes to witchcraft, a witch doctor is lower than a sorcerer, and a sorcerer is lower than a wizard. They are ranks. So now, when you are at that level of sorcery, 
uh, you're at a high level. But even me, I was being bewitched and the witchcraft would get me. So I would also look for more powers to defend myself. So it's only in the kingdom of God where you do not have to fear witchcraft because the Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But in the kingdom of darkness, they are on their own. So, uh, so witches bewitch witches. They bewitch each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, they fight for more power. It's survival. survival for the feet. Have you fixed this mic? Check, check. Yes, because, you know, you know, there are a few things that I believe we are picking up. Number one is that the devil is a created creature. He's not omnipresent. So how does the devil work? He has fallen angels, and these fallen angels have demons under them. And these demons are the ones released in a mission. Is it making sense? So she was a principality or a controller of East ah, Uganda. Because I had been turned into an altar. Now a person has the ability to have uh, so many demons. You can, one person can be having demons that control the entire nation of Kenya. One person. And those people, they have supernatural powers. You find that this person doesn't even need to announce on TV that they will be in a place. But the moment they land into a place, it's like the demons and the angel, the fallen angels begin to blow the trumpet to mobilize people to come around those people. So you find that if a certain person is in an area, people will run. It's like, it's like these demons will be mobilizing people to go towards, towards those people. That's why yeah, the politicians, the politicians, <laughs> the politicians okay. go to the kingdom of darkness to get support. To mobilize people to surround them they can even uh, give their lives for these politicians you know even when they are shooting the the armies are shooting at them they are just there they don't know why they are there but they are there because life is spiritual so um it is now uh during that time after now let me go back to to he was asking how hair looks like yes because i wanted us to go on a journey because one of the things that I want everybody to understand is that the devil cannot be in all places at the same time. He's not omnipresent. Are we together? So what we deal with is principalities and also we deal with demons of a territory. It, does it make sense up to there? So that now, as you are entering into prayer, you need to ask for insight to know which demons operate in that territory. So you say there is a wizard, there is a, there is a witch. A witch, mm -hmm. a sorcerer, and then a wizard. What is the difference? Before we go to the gates, because um, we, we keep on hearing these witchcraft prayers and all these things. How do witches get their power? Now, uh, witch doctors, they work for the kingdom of darkness, but at a, a lower level. So you find that this person is a witch, but they don't even know who Satan is. They have never met with Satan. But they are working with uh, traditional spirits, territorial spirits, depending on the kind of level they are at. And they mix herbs. They can mix stems and roots. They know how to mix those things and use them against man. Because before the fall of man, man was depending on God for everything, for, for oxygen. For, but now when man fell, Man began to depend on, on nature for, for survival. That's why we are limited. So uh, what the, these witch doctors do, they get these things that are supposed to provide life, to give us life, like the trees and, and the food, and that nature. And then they mix it. They, they know how to mix the roots and the stems. And then they speak. That's why you, you have to be careful with your tongue, how you use your tongue. Because the tongue can create either positive things in your life or negative things. So what they do, they mix these stems and roots and speak negatively about the person they want to, to, to maybe bewitch. And then they assign demons to follow those words and the, the, the sacrifices that they are making. So they slaughter birds, they slaughter uh, animals, they just to, to empower whatever they are doing. And the reason as to why they sacrifice is because, you see, many times we say that uh, when someone, when there are accidents, the demons are taking blood.
but they are not drinking. You'd never see the demons coming there to drink the blood. What these demons do is they take, they drink the life force from that object or from that human being or from that animal that is losing that life. Let's say if you are 60 and you're supposed to live to 80 years and then they kill you at 60, there is a life force of 20 years. So these demons drink the life force and they survive on that energy. So you, uh, you find that they are all demons, but in every generation, they are also operating like that generation because every generation is greater. Uh, me, the things I do, my parents cannot do those things and they could not do those things in their age. So because I, I am of a greater generation and now my children have to do greater things than the things that I, I, I do. So uh, the enemy knows that and now they target the children. So these witch doctors basically when they are sacrificing they ask for children to be sacrificed because they are innocent one and then they also have a long life force a bigger life force. You find that this child is supposed to live to 60 years, to 80 years, to 100 years. But if they kill them when they are young, they, they drink a lot of energy. That's why many witch doctors live for, for a longer period of time than the other normal people because they keep stealing people's life force. Then now you find now the sorcerers. The sorcerers now, they control regions, they control territories. They, these are people of influence. They are politicians, they are musicians, they are in high, uh, they, they are in big offices. They are influencing people, but they are using uh, evil powers. They are, they are serving, they are getting powers from the kingdom of darkness. They have sold their souls to the devil. And they are also sacrificing to the kingdom of darkness. And they see the devil face to face. They are building the kingdom of darkness here on earth. And they are representing the kingdom of darkness. Now, those are the sorcerers. In most cases, people look up to them as celebrities, as stars. You know, they are, they are worshipped by people here on earth because, uh, not because they are very different from the normal people, but because of the power that they, they have and the things that they do that tend not to be normal. Like, you know, so they, they, they begin now to influence people on a higher scale and they are even above the witch doctors. They have more power than the witch doctors. Then you find the wizards. The wizards are intellectual people. Uh, they are mostly like professors. You find them in, in universities. Uh, they are doctors. They are, they are people with, you know, with brains. But they use their brains to mislead people because of their, their level of knowledge and understanding. Uh, if, uh, if your professor told you that masturbation is okay, and you're a student and you're looking up to this professor, then you take that word that the professor had said. If the doctor says, yes, there is HIV, but the only way to avoid getting HIV or unwanted pregnancy is by, uh, by uh, masturbating, because th this word is coming from a doctor who is being used by the enemy you end up doing what the doctor has said. Or if they say it is okay to abort, and it is coming from this doctor who is brilliant, then it is very easy for them to influence. They use their, their wizards, and uh, they are basically planted in places to recruit the younger generation. So I don't know if I've explained well. The sorcerers are these celebrities, the, the puppets, you know. More, may I call them puppets because... The enemy uses them to deliver his message or promote his agenda. For example, if they want to promote homosexuality, they will just have these celebrities pose as gay, a gay couple. And they, are, they will show you that they are successful, they, they are living normally, and they, they will use these celebrities to influence other people. Wow. If I can, can I just give you a, can I give you a quick origin of demons? Where demons come from, if you check your Bible, you'll see in Genesis chapter 6, God shows us where these things come from. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Okay. Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, 
saw the daughters of men. Now, that phrase there, sons of God, in Hebrew it is Benai Elohim. And the Benai Elohim are not human beings. The Benai Elohim are the fallen angels. Okay? So, the sons of God, or the Benai Elohim, saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So you see the Bible is telling you in Genesis chapter 6 that fallen angels came down to the earth. They left their own habitation and they came to the earth and began to mate with human women. Are you seeing what they are saying? What he's saying here? And verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the Benai Elohim, the sons of God, came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. You see, they were the famous men. Because these women had children with these fallen angels. And the children were born normally. But they continued to grow and grow and grow. And some of them are very famous. That's why you hear of Hercules. Men who were giants. This sounds like Greek mythology. But the truth is that they were Nephilim, hybrid beings, half human, half fallen angel. This was the time of Noah. So when these beings began to procreate and to populate the earth, God saw that their hearts were wicked and plans of evil were in their hearts and in their minds continuously. Therefore, the Lord decided to flood the earth, to destroy this race of beings. Are you seeing what is happening? So do you see why God sent the flood? And the truth is that these fallen angels, very intelligent beings, these fallen angels did not just mix themselves with human women, but they mixed themselves with all of creation to desecrate God's creation because Satan is a perverter. He perverts God's creation, okay? So they were mixing themselves with alligator, with sheep, with goats, with lion, with everything. They are mixing their DNA with everything to desecrate and to, to pollute creation. That's why God had all of the animals come into the ark. The animals which he created. He put them in the ark and Noah and his family and he shut the door. And everything that God did not create drowned. Okay? Those beings that drowned became disembodied spirits. And those disembodied spirits are what we call demons. All right? That is how they came. But the Bible also gives us a hint that these spirits were not just there in the days of Noah. Because it says in those days... And also after that, in verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that. after that. So he's telling you in those days of Noah and also after the flood, they continued reproducing. And I tell you a mystery. It is possible for a spirit, a demon, to mate with a human woman and she gets pregnant and has a child. Okay. Now... So, yeah, okay, you know, she said something very powerful. Yeah. The wizards, the witches are there to establish the kingdom of darkness. Yes. And the church is also there to establish the kingdom of light. But we can see the extreme of and the seriousness and the commitment of the demonic versus the church because darkness should not rule but why is darkness ruling we are dealing with an omnipresent God and a devil who is not omnipresent but it looks like there is a lot of demonic activity versus -vis Christian activities you said there are jails in hell who are in those jails okay now I'm going to talk about jail, but talking about a wizard, a person like Harry Potter is also a wizard because he's gifted, he writes literature, but his literature is to promote witchcraft. 
And because of that gift and that influence that he has, our children, the literature teachers, recommend them to read Harry Potter's books. And when they are reading those books, they are getting this, uh, they are getting initiated into the kingdom of darkness. They are beginning to know how to use witchcraft, how to send spells, how to, you know, they are beginning to read about magic. And when they are doing that and they are getting initiated, the enemy is using this brilliant mind, but using it to promote the kingdom of darkness. God has also give, given us gifts as children of God, but now it is up to us to decide how we use our gifts because God will not come and take the gift away from us. The, there are people whose, who, whose destinies are very, very bright, and that can be seen in the spiritual realm. And that destiny is seen in form of a star. There's, there are people whose stars shine so bright, and the enemy targets such people because he knows when he gets that, that bright person, he's going to use that person to influence many other people. Someone could ask, why would the devil of all people get you? Yes, he, get, he got me because he would see my destiny. They are able to see in the spiritual realm. Those people that are bewitched are not bad people. The enemy fights them because of their destiny. Like Joseph, he dreamt when the other stars were bowing before his star, meaning he was destined to be a leader. And when the brothers heard that Joseph would be a leader, they wanted to kill him in order for them to kill his destiny, to kill that dream. And they were like, let us kill him and see if that dream will come to pass. And there are many people who have been bewitched because they are members of the family who are able to see their stars. And because they can read and see that these people are destined for greatness, they become jealous. And when they become jealous, they start bewitching that person. They get Let's say they can get uh, something as a point of contact, a piece of cloth or whatever this person is using, and they will take it to a shrine. And when they take it to a shrine, this is what happens when someone goes to a shrine to bewitch someone. These witch doctors, they are, they are, they are like they are vessels that are being used by the enemy to initiate people. So when you go to a shrine, the witch doctor will ask you to take that person you want to bewitch uh, is object, like a point of contact. And when you take maybe a photo or a, a piece of cloth, anything, the witch doctor will tell you to put it on the altar. So when you place that, that object on the altar, the witch doctor will tell you to speak to the altar and, and tell the altar what you want to see happening to that person. And let's say you don't want the, that girl to get married because she's beautiful. You want her to be a disgrace to their family. You begin to speak at the altar. You see, the Bible says that guard your heart because out of your heart comes the issues of life. So this person, because of jealousy, goes to this altar and then they begin to speak negatively about the person they, they are feeling jealousy of. And what happens is that the devil gets this person's spirit because the spirit is in the heart. The intuition is in the heart. So they, they connect that person's spirit to the person that they are bewitching. And then they begin to use that person's spirit. Now that person becomes like an evil spirit. <laughs> That's why it's very possible to cast out a living, a living person from another person. Because this is what happens at the shrine. When this person is speaking negatively, the words are coming from the spirit. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And... Uh, and that's why when you do something evil, they say that person has a bad heart, but the physical heart is functioning. They are talking about the spiritual heart because life is spiritual. That person's heart is dead. That person has a heart of stone. They are talking about your spirit. So now, when this person is speaking and they are covenanting this person, they are yoking this person to the other person that he's bewitching. So now that person will be given a task by the spirits without their knowledge. Because they have sold their soul out of greed or jealousy. They have sold their soul to the enemy. Uh, they will tell them to bring a sacrifice or anything or maybe some money at the satanic altar. And they will do that. By doing that, they are selling their soul, but they don't know. So now they begin to monitor the person that they are bewitching. 
So if they bewitched you to drop out of school and maybe you just passed narrowly, you maybe you decided you could not go to university because you did not have good grades and uh, your parents decide to take you to a, a small, to do a small course, this person who is bewitching you will feel even bad because you're doing that small course. So he will keep going back to the shrine and ask the devil, why is this person now doing a small course when I never wanted this person to go to school completely? So they'll keep sacrificing and following and following. And as they're doing that, they are also getting deeper into bondage. So it is not this person who's being bewitched that is getting bound. It is even the person that is bewitching that is getting deeper into bondage. Now, when you realize that your star or your destiny has been stolen, the Bible says if a thief is caught, he pays seven times. Mm. So you begin to claim everything that the enemy has stolen because when they are speaking those words against you, they are programming, they are programming your life. There is what they call the full moon and the half moon. So it is during the full moon that these shrines are very functional because there they begin to program someone's life. This is when people's businesses are supposed to flourish and excel. You know, there is a season of plenty and there is a season of lack. Even Joseph, when he saw that uh, through the, the dream that the king had, he told the king that there are seven years of plenty and there are seven years of lack. So when you have plenty, you have to store so that you survive during the other seven years. So even in the seasons, there are those seasons of you having a lot of money and there are seasons when the business is not doing so well. So you begin to serve and, and all that. So it is during that full moon when people are flourishing, people's children are getting jobs, businesses, they are getting married. There is a season when you're supposed to get married. So the enemy frustrates you during that season. And now when you're past menopause, that is when he begins to bring uh, people who are not even of your class, he br your, tw your 45, he brings a 20-something a twenty -something person to propose to you that they want to marry you and you're beyond that. You know, you can now not give birth. You know, he, he plays, he messes around with people's seasons and they do that through what they call witchcraft. So every time you realize that you're supposed to be in your season and there is delay because you can feel it in your spirit that this is my season to do this. I am supposed to have graduated by this time. I'm supposed to have married by this time. I'm supposed to have given birth by this time, but there is something that is holding my star. You begin to pray and claim it back, and the Bible says he blots out every bad handwriting mm. that has been written against you to program your life, you know, for negativity. Through the blood of Jesus, he blots out that bad handwriting. And God begins to realign your destiny according to his will. And now what happens is that he visits that sorcerer, that witch that stole your star. He visits that witch. And then he takes back your star. He restores it. And then he takes that witch's star also. And he visits the, 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 the lineage of that witch. He gets seven more stars from that person's uh, lineage. Let's say the children are supposed to excel and... He gets those seven stars and he gives them to you. And then you shine more than how you are supposed to shine mm. before the enemy messed with your destiny. Amen. So he's a God of restoration. Mm. Yeah, so I know very many people are victims because many times the Bible says, my people perish mm. due to lack of knowledge. Uh, and, and how many know the full moon always happened during Halloween? Yes. That's the time when it, it doesn't matter the weather, you'll just see the full moon. And if you don't understand this language, for most of the people who work in Arab nations, UAE, where Islam is on the rise, they don't just employ you because of your papers. They have to study your star in the spirit before they give you their job. And that's why most of the people in Arab nations, and I've had this complaint, they say, Pastor, I've stayed here for 10 years, but I have nothing to show for. Because these are people who have an intelligence of graces. It's there in the Bible. The Bible says, Laban saw Jacob. And he said, I have located you in the spirit through divination. And I'm prospering because of your grace. Buenas Fesana. So it is my prayer. Wherever you send your CV, may God send you where you belong. Not a place where you labor for Laban. 
but a place where God has planted you for your destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we are seeing there is a lot of ignorance. Uh, and you, it's possible to be a victim of circumstance. And this is where prayer comes in. That's why we cannot pray for you. You have to pray for yourself. Because pastor is not with you from Monday to Friday. You are alone in the marketplace doing business. You don't know who you transact with. So we can only pray for you on Sunday. But you need to have a personal altar. I'm saying something, sir. Yes, in fact, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, it says, it says that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. So it is biblical to do your own business, to be in business for yourself because you'll find yourself being a Christian, you are born again, but you are working for someone who's not even saved. You see the conflict of interest? So it is the desire of God that you do your own business. So you can be employed, but you are there to learn. And once you understand, you branch out and do your own business and become kingdom agents of change. Yeah, and Amen. How they, uh, the other ways of, uh, of how the enemy can steal your destiny is... Uh, Joseph, for example, because he had a bright destiny, even Potiphar's wife saw it, and she wanted to seduce him. Had Joseph accepted and slept with that lady, he would have never become a prime minister. Uh, what the enemy wants is legal ground. If he can have legal ground, something he can hold on to, the Bible says he's the accuser of brethren, then if he has something that he can use legally against you, then it means it is possible for the enemy to hold someone from uh, achieving their purpose in life. So many people, especially the men who sleep around, uh, their, their, their girls I used to work with, they were very, very beautiful, half castes. Uh, most of them mixed Arab, mixed African, mixed Indian, mixed. They are, they are very, very beautiful. But these girls are on a mission. They don't just go with any man. They can even fall for a man who is poor as long as they can see that this man is destiny, is great. The reason as to why they would look for those kinds of men, uh, I gave you an example of my dad before he got saved. He was coming from a family of covenants. People like that, if it's not through deliverance or by the grace of God, they cannot survive here on earth um, easily because... They are, they, they are here illegally. There is something, if someone is covenanted to, the, to a demon, if someone is, there is something attached to a, a, an evil spirit or a fallen angel, they are here on this planet illegally. So they cannot flourish. They cannot, they cannot shine like a human being. Yeah, or have blessings like a human being. The fact that you're in God's image is just enough for you to walk in the blessings of God. So now what they do, they look for someone who is in God's image, but he doesn't know, he's not aware, he's ignorant. And now they will come to that person, and uh, when they enter into that person's life, they, of course they have connections. Now they will connect that person to the people that they know, and that person will be working so hard just to please this girl or to please that man. And they are making a lot of money, but they are buying a lot of things for that girl. So when this girl feels like they have drained this person and now they have stolen the star, they, they end the relationship and make that man useless, and they jump into another relationship. And they, 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 they were very beautiful girls, but that was just their mission. Sleeping with men uh, who, whose destinies are bright, and once they sleep with that man, they have no use for him. They go to another person. They steal stars. And there are men that I was working with. They were politicians. They were influential men. They had entered into a covenant with the devil. Their, their covenant is to sleep with virgins. So virgins whose stars are bright. Now uh, what they would do, you find this is a professor. He's 80. Prime minister of a country. He's very old. But you see him with university students. What do you think is uh, looking for with those university students. He has a wife. They are legally married. Why doesn't the wife come out? 
if the husband is all the time in newspapers with young girls, the, you will never see the wife coming out because the wife is aware of who the husband is and how the husband makes a living. They make a living by sleeping with virgins. And there is another principal of a very popular school in Uganda. He died, but he had branches, different branches. And he, in those schools, he would sleep with the students, the innocent girls, infect them with HIV, uh, impregnant them, and steal their destinies. So uh, girls who look for men with money, you have to watch out. You're being given like, uh, let's say, 20,000 Kenya shillings for, for a night, but it is going to cost you your destiny. It's going to cost you your womb. It's going to cost you your life. It's going to cost you a lot. But just 30,000 Kenya shillings, you're just looking at something for, for a day, forgetting that you have a bright future. So they would, if you realize that you messed up and your destiny has been tampered with, it is very possible for you to come back to God because he's a loving father. You ask for forgiveness, and then you claim that which the enemy has stolen from you. And God will restore, he will restore everything that the enemy has stolen from you, and he will cause him to pay seven times. So I felt wow. I needed to share. It's amazing. Yeah, I believe we can clap. Because we live in a generation of sponsors. And for those that are in campus setting, you know that there are girls who recruit and introduce girls to sponsors. I was one of them. I, I was at university, and I would get these girls, take them to clubs, and I, I would have these rich guys come, and they would pretend like they are interested in me, and I would tell them, if, if you're really interested in me, sponsor my friends. And they don't know that I know these guys, but I'm pretending like I don't know them. So they, because some of them are entering club for the first time, they are so excited. The guys are showing money, splashing money on them and buying them alcohol. So when I see that they are drunk, and yet I'm the one who had taken them there, I see they are drunk and they are enjoying, I would find a way of leaving them in club. So these guys would be very generous to offer them lifts. They would tell them, or maybe let us go to my crib. I'll, I'll take you back to your hostel tomorrow. And because they have seen money, they are drunk. They have been blinded by the things of this world. They, they, they feel they have arrived. Because some of them are pastor's children at home, no listening to secular music, no going to clubs. They are seeing like they have arrived. So by the time they come back to university, I don't even want to know anything about them because my mission would be accomplished. Mine would be to take them to those guys and I would be paid. So whatever happens afterwards, I don't want to know. I would never want to know. But uh, I would, one thing was for sure, these girls' destinies would be taken. They would be exchanged. You find that this girl, before you introduced her to those people, she was performing well in class. Now from the time I, I would take them to club, they, all they want to do is to club. They, they want to club. They can club from Monday to Monday. They no longer want to attend lectures. They no longer, their, their dress code changes. Everything about, they, now, they are now eating tuition. They are spending the money that they are supposed to use to pay for their tuition. They are now spending it to make themselves look beautiful, get the most expensive hair so that they can fit in that class of people, not knowing that they are stealing their destinies. And many of them never graduated. Some of them even ran mad because after those men sleeping with you, it depends on the kind of covenant they are in with the devil. Some of them, every girl they sleep with runs mad. Every girl they sleep with dies prematurely. They, they, there are some men, once he sleeps with you, he doesn't want to see you again because he knows you're going to die. So it is, it is not worth it. That's why Jesus says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Everyone has a husband. Everyone has a wife. And that wife that has been ordained by God is, is what is best for you, not those uh, sponsors, because most of them are agents. Wow. Generation Yakutesa Instagram. Because, you know, I know I've been through campus and I know the pressure is real. And majority of us come from very humble families. And 
this looks like a trap. And I remember when we're in campus, they will say, whatever happens in Vegas, it stays in Vegas. But what you don't know is that Vegas, your destiny was lost there. Is it opening our eyes? Now, are we getting our burdens? Why? Before our brothers and sisters go to the university, we need to covenant with them in prayer. Because some of them could be victims of circumstances and we don't even know what is happening. Bambu, yes? Yeah, many, many campuses, many universities are initiation grounds. Many universities are grounds for initiation where students go a virgin and within three months they are deflowered. So they are initiation grounds Breeding grounds for demons. Many campuses, many universities. Someone goes there, they're saved. By the time they've been there for one year, they don't even mention the name of Jesus anymore. So they are breeding grounds for initiation. And the environment in very many universities are filled with the demonic. And many universities are altars themselves. So it is important that you grow in God and build your own schools and build your own university. Mm. Amen? Amen. My God, you know, you're just reminding me because at Jomo Kenyatta Library, there was a river running there. And that same river is the same river that runs at Nairobi City Council, County. There is a river that runs there. And that is the river that shows up at Uhuru Park. And it is the same river that connects with the Nairobi River. And when you go to Uhuru Park, they build some pyramids. Because Nairobi was marked by Freemasons before we even came. The whole city was marked. <laughs> One thing you don't know, uh, there are serious things happening in the city with some few lions there. But we bless the Lord, the Lion of Judah rolled. Some of you will get the message later. But those lions were not lions. Those were gates. And that's why the lion of Judah had to roll for some of the gates to be brought down. Hallelujah. So we are living in an age of great deception. Uh, politicians are reading the Bible. Uh, they are listening to worship just to woo voters. But by this, we begin to know some of them are wizards and sorcerers. And that's why sometimes we vote unknowingly. Let me give you a testimony concerning Kiambu. You guys don't know this. Some men gathered in a village. They took Kabogo's shirt and dressed a dog and threw the dog alive in a grave and they cast Kabogo. And when the dog was thrown in that grave, the whole of Kiambu atmosphere shifted. And when men were going to vote, they didn't even know why they were voting Waitito. I say that because we were witnesses. I mean, Kiambu. There was such hatred in the atmosphere. It, yani, literally, you will not even know why you are lining, but the atmosphere shifted because the terrain. I'm not saying this because of supporting Kabogo or Waitito. I'm just saying about a spiritual reality that happened in our time, the terrain shifted when these old men buried a living dog. And later, it's like our eyes were open and we were asking ourselves, okay, whom did we vote in? Because something moved. And that's why the church must be in prayer to sustain an atmosphere. Not taking a pastor to be a governor. Is a pastor leading the church in prayer so that the atmosphere is not defiled? Buenas Amen. Uh, I just wanted to add, when they go to universities and they are deflowered, you see sex is a covenant, okay? And it lasts forever, ever, 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 ever. So, when they go to universities and they are deflowered through fornication, through adultery, through masturbation, through homosexuality. Satan utilizes sexual sin because it is through the protocol of sexual sin that the stars and destinies of human beings are taken. Okay? 
through fornication. Fornication is not just a deed. It's not just something you're doing with a lady. It is a spirit. And that spirit has strategized against you before you came to university. Before, before you even did the deed, this spirit was strategizing for your star. Okay? They had meetings and they strategized for every human being. When you were born, God appointed angels for you. But when you were born, Satan also appointed demons for you. So, these demons, their work is to pull you into sin by any and every means necessary. While you are doing the deed of fornication, the spirits of fornication are there in the room with you. They are the ones who compelled you and brought you to that place in the first place. And they are drawing on your energy. That is how they feed. They feed on energy. Spirits, they feed on energy. They don't, they're not like us. We feed on food. But their food is energy. Okay? Vibrations. Deeds. That's why in the temples of idolatry, they would worship the gods through fornication. And in the temple, there were temple prostitutes. And in those, with those, those temple prostitutes would sell sex to visitors. And they would please the gods by having sex because sex is worship. Okay? So these things, we're telling you them not so that you can be afraid, but so that you can be empowered. So that the next time the temptation mm. appears, next time, you see, because a demon, it communicates not the way we communicate by words. A demon communicates through pictures and images. It can send you a video of yourself during your last sex campaign. It can send you images. It can send you suggestions and thoughts. Now, it is up to you whether you are going to entertain those thoughts or respond like Jesus did. It is written, thou shalt not commit adultery. You should be, when the temptation comes, learn to talk even when you're by yourself. Don't worry if somebody thinks you're crazy because you're talking to yourself. You're not talking. You're responding. You're replying. It is written. Because if you don't reply then the spirit assumes that you're okay with that thought. And if you're okay with that thought, it will keep on sending you more thoughts. And as a thought grows from a seed, it germinates, and then it becomes a deed. Okay? So if you can win the battle of the mind, you have already won. Amen. Wow. We have 15 minutes so that we can pray. Leo watu najua taomba serious. Cuz wako na material. Um she has her books outside there, five of them. So four of them. So this tells you we can't download everything in one session. But we bless the Lord that we are friends. So I have access to them. But again I, I don't want to abuse the access. Amen. So how did you get out? As I said, uh, getting initiated into the kingdom of darkness is very easy. Some people get initiated through food. Others get initiated uh, through uh, fornication. Others, you know, they, they, the way to hell is wide. But now coming out of it is, a, is a, a matter of life and death. So it got to a point whereby I was now beginning to, to get resources from the kingdom of darkness. I was now beginning to test, uh, to test some bit of fame. I was beginning to test money. I was now getting blinded with material things. I was supporting my parents. My mother would come and borrow money from me uh, to pay rent and put other bills, but she wouldn't know how I make that money. And I was also testing power because I would make all of them sleep. My brother is here. He's also a witness. I would make all of them sleep in the house. I go club, I come back anytime. Then as soon as I come back, they wake up. I would do things like if someone offended me and I tell that person that you will see, really they would see because um, my grandmother was this person who would make people dig in her farm at night. They think they are dreaming, but they are digging. She would parade them and they, they work for her at night. Then they go back, <laughs> they go back to sleep very tired, very dirty. They think they dreamt, but they were working. So no one would talk about her. 
So even me, I was now becoming more powerful than my grandmother to a point that she was now regretting uh, introducing me to those forces because I was now taking her customers. I was doing exploits in the kingdom of, dark <laughs> of darkness. So now, because I was now beginning to dine with great men and great women and everyone who, who knew the power that I had never wanted to let go, they would do whatever it takes to be with me. So if I entered any club, I would go with him sometimes because, you see, you have to pray for your firstborn because this, these firstborns determine the kind of path that the other children will take. So because I had now started going to clubs, I had now begun to influence my young brother. The first thing Satan told me to do was to sacrifice him. But I failed because he was prayerful and my mother was always praying for us. Mm. So now, the only way for me to be able to sacrifice him was to, to make him fall from the grace. And if I would be successful uh, and make him fall from, from salvation, then it would be easy for me to kill him either in an accident or something like that. And no one would, would point at me that I would be responsible. So I started taking him to clubs. And every club I would go, I would never pay. Whether it is a concert, whether there is an international artist, they would just look at me and just open the gate. And I would sit in the VIP. I would never sit behind because they knew me. If they don't give me where I want to sit, I would cause it to rain in that concert. It would rain and the people would scatter. So... <laughs> so now I was respected in those clubs I was respected, I had power I was testing now that uh, where well, I did not have peace because I could never sleep I would never drink water I was already thirsty that explains what Jesus uh, meant when he spoke to the Samaritan woman that the water, the kind of water I give if you drink you will thirst no more because there are people they can afford to buy water but they are already thirsty so me the only drinks I would take were alcohol, I would take Coca-Cola, and you know how harmful that drink is. But that is the only drink, and if I was to take water, it had to be warm with a lot of tea in it. Uh, I, I was specific, like, I wouldn't eat normally, normal food like normal people, because the enemy was feeding my soul with blood. And uh, at the same time, the food I was eating was abnormal. I was eating soil, charcoal, soap. If I tell you how I survived, if I, I explain to the doctor how long I ate those things, I would be dead by now, according to the doctors. But God had mercy on me. So I was depending on drugs. And uh, I was very small, like Mose Radio. You know, and, you know, we would go to clubs and these musicians are singing, you give me heart attack. You turn me upside down. You give me heart attack. And people are dancing, heart attack, heart attack. You give me heart attack. You know, they don't know that these musicians, are, uh, they are invoking a spirit of death upon the people that they are ministering to. Uh, just like we here in church, we declare, and you know, the, the mouth, the tongue is very powerful. So we would sing songs like that, uh, worshiping the devil, and people, you know, for us, we would be dancing and sending demons, and people are fighting in clubs. Yeah, so with that kind of life, I was now going to be initiated at 16. That is when I had met with Satan's uh, warrior angel. I had been uh, introduced to uh, different organizations. I was going to work for very big organizations. I was supposed to start... Uh, an NGO, and this NGO would look like something very good, like I am helping the women, yet my mission was supposed, to, I was supposed to, to introduce uh, homosexuality, the, I was supposed to promote uh, lesbian, lesbianism, but through my NGO, and I was supposed to work with these powerful non-governmental organizations, and they have a lot of money, and they are working to build the devil's kingdom. So now, with all that money involved, the connections that I had, it would be very difficult for me to get saved. And I cannot say that I, I, I thought that I would be saved. I was on a mission. And uh, in that meeting, a certain, I, I used to meet the devil face to face for meetings. Just like you can meet with Pastor T uh, to have a meeting uh, for what is going to happen on Sunday. So... <laughs> 
I would meet with Saturn and we program and see what, what, what we need to program ahead, ahead of time, how we need to control, uh, what we need to be able to control the youth. The, you know, we would discuss uh, various things. So now in one meeting, Saturn said, I am going to make you great because you have initiated 996 people. Mm. So now within this short period and the people who have been serving me before you, they, they, they have, they, you can't even count, they, they, you can't compare the numbers compared to the people you have initiated. And now that's when he revealed to me the secret. He said, I got you because of the prophecy on your, on your life. And he showed me a pastor prophesying one day uh, on my life when I was in church. I was a Sunday school uh, going girl. And this pastor prophesied that I would win souls in the kingdom of God. So Satan told me, I got you because you are a soul winner. Wow. And that is the calling on your life. So because you are a soul winner, you have managed to win 996 people into my kingdom within a short period of time. And I have a lot a lot of expectations from you. So because of that, I am going to give you more power, more fame, more influence. And um, you have to enter into a covenant. Of course, I entered into that covenant with, the, uh, with uh, certain artists. And uh, in that covenant, they would tell you when you're going to die. How they would predict when you're going to die is they see how big your spirit is to contain their secrets. There are people who cannot keep secrets. Those ones, they would die quickly. So, <laughs> uh, <gossipers>. so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so for me, when the enemy looked at, at me, they studied my spirit. They said, you're going to live up to 40 because your, your strength can, can hold our secrets to 40. And then this musician I was with, radio, the enemy told him when he would die. And when I got out, I was crying, and I shared with him. I told him, this is the time they have told me to leave. He said, you, you're lucky. I told him, what about you? He said, if I tell you mine, let us just enjoy life. Let us just spend money. Let us just enjoy life. Let us live uh, the best of our, of, our, of our remaining little life. So he knew. They know when they are going to die. That's why he cut his hair when he was going to die. He began to try to ask God for mercy. They even tried to sing gospel songs when they are just about to die. So, and, and radio died, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. now it's, it's, uh, it's now during that time, God used something that I loved the most. I believe one of the reasons as to why I got delivered is because my mother dedicated me to God when I was young, my mother and father. Secondly, my mother was interceding for me regardless of how rebellious I had become. She never cast me. All the time she was mobilizing intercessors to pray for me. Mm -hmm. And then also, the other, the other reason, God used something that I love the most to cause me to desire to get out of the kingdom of darkness. The devil told me that I am going to give you everything that you desire, but now I want you to give me your daddy's brain. I want your dad to lose his mind especially during the full moon, he'll be very mad. Half moon, he'll be very okay. But the more he becomes mad, the more money will flow into your account. And uh, it's very easy for you to protect your person if he's mad and he's a rich, mad person, his person. So I, I said, what? My dad? You know, he knew I loved my dad. He said, yeah, I did not tell you to kill him because I know you love him so much. And that is what broke my heart and I began to desire to get delivered, but I didn't know how. And uh, it is during that time, my mother began to mobilize pastors. And on the day when I was supposed to be in the the day I was supposed to be covenanted, now I was going to be very deep beyond recover. Or I was not going to be delivered anymore. Or there are people who are beyond the grace. No matter how you preach, no matter what you say, they have already been sold out to the enemy. It only takes God, either God himself, but their cup of iniquity is full. They are, they are irredeemable. <laughs> so that is the point at which I was going. And uh, my mom, 
began to mobilize pastors to pray for me, she now realized, God made her realize that I was not normal because the things I was doing were abnormal. And uh, as they were praying for me, that day I could not attend. I was not able to go for that function where I was going to be ordained. And now Satan knew that I was now, my heart had been broken from the time he requested for my dad. So he came personally to kill me. And that is how the pastors saw that I was struggling for my life. They, they mobilized the different pastors and churches to pray for me. You see, my deliverance, <laughs> I don't think one person could handle. So churches began to <laughs> intercede for me. Mm. And uh, God had mercy. Just to, the hour when I'm, I was supposed to be initiated into the kingdom of darkness is the hour when God delivered my soul. Mm. Saint Angel Michael, he sent Angel Michael where my soul had been caged. And Angel Michael uh, told me, I, I used to fight with angels. So when Angel Michael came, I said, why are you fighting a weak person? He said, I am not coming to fight you. I'm coming because my master has sent me to deliver you. Today, you will be delivered. Wow. Mm. And I asked him, who is your master? And he told me, my master is Jesus. I said, who is Jesus? Uh, he said, Jesus is my master and he's your master. So he has sent me to deliver you. So when I got into my body, I was like someone waking up from a deep sleep. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know my relatives. I could not identify my brother because from the time my soul was taken from my body, the soul is your, your will, your emotions, and your, your mind. So when they take your soul, it is your spiritual body, but it has the will, the emotions, and the mind. That's why the people who don't have the soul can kill without feeling anything. You know, for those people, they are killing. So uh, when I got into my body, I could not identify my brother because when my soul was taken, I was young. So now he's a big man with a big voice. My mom is now old. My dad is also another old man. So I was thinking that it is a setup. And I was bragging. I, he got scared of me. Because one time he saw me going to a club to perform. He came to report me at home and he phoned me at home. So he, <laughs> he was scared of me. We were never friends with him. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I got delivered and they brought him to me, I was telling him, you see, I'm powerful. Don't think that because Jesus has brought me back, I cannot do anything. If you people mess with me, I will teach you a lesson. So I was delivered, but I did not know who Christ was. I was still holding on to the satanic powers. I was holding on to, you know, because in the kingdom of darkness, it is survival for the fittest. So I asked the pastors around me, who brought back my soul? They told me it is Jesus. I said, how can I please Jesus? They said, by serving him. I said, how can I serve him? They said, by testifying. So I said, okay. So I got delivered on Saturday. I started ministry on Sunday. But <laughs> I did not know what I was doing. Me, every time I would be given a microphone, I would tell them, if it is not for Jesus, I would bewitch all of you. You know that kind of, <laughs> <laughs> of gospel. So people would just come, and people would get saved because they knew that I was speaking the truth, but I didn't know how to see that truth. <laughs> I would give it to them raw. So, <laughs> and I, I, by then, because I had not surrendered those evil powers, I would even look at, at as a, you, you, were, you had been fornicating, now you are here preaching, because I would be able to see. So people, some people were scared of me because of my testimony, while others would come and get saved. Now, how I got to surrender those powers, uh, there is a pastor, he's called Pastor Clement. He convinced me to surrender those powers and trust God for my life. And I told him, you have to prove to me that your God is powerful. Because sometimes I would beat his angels. And, and how comes I would, I would succeed in some mission? He said, it's because you had a covenant. Your mother had a covenant with God concerning your life. So God could not allow the enemy to destroy you. So that grace was on your life, even when you were serving the devil. I refused to believe. I said, I have to see the power of God. So one time he came to Eldoret, and he told me, I'm going with you for this mission. So we went to Eldoret for ministry, and uh, when we arrived, we, we were told to check 
to check into the hotels where we were going to stay. And uh, what, some of the ushers stole the pastor's bag. And that pastor's bag had some money. And that money was supposed to help in the conference. So when the pastor, when, after we checked in, we went, we had tea, and then we went back to the hotel. I, he said, he told them to give me a room next to his. So I had the pastor shouting, where is my money? I cannot see this uh, briefcase that we came with. He began to ask all of us. And I came out and told him, pastor, that thief, just allow me. <laughs> just allow me to deal with that thief. How do you want me to treat him? Do you want me to be kind? Do you want me to finish him? Do you want... Because now he was my only Christian friend, and I was being generous. I was just being kind. <laughs> oh, Pastor said, he just, I remember he prayed, he said, God, reveal yourself to this girl. Mm. Prove yourself strong to this girl. I know, I know you have a reason as to why you set her free, but she needs to let go of whatever she's holding on to in order for her to be totally free. So I said, Pastor, because all I needed, you see in the spiritual room, the enemy needs legal ground. So I just needed the pastor to give me his word that deal with that thief. And I would do it because he has given me his word. I could not do it without the pastor's word. So now I was telling him now, Pastor, what are you doing? You know, that is a lot of money. Your conference. Pastor is like, no, no, that's not the way we handle things in Christianity. I'm like, Pastor, let me tell you, you don't know me. You don't know what I can do. You don't know. <laughs> so to cut the story short, we go to visit the church where we are going to minister. The pastor is briefing us, and he has a very big ministry. And while we are touring the church, uh, the ushers came, and they knelt down. And I was like, hold on. And I told Pastor, we stole this briefcase. We saw the money, but we are not comfortable. We are not at peace. So we have brought back this briefcase. We want you to forgive us and take it back. So now pastor said, before I take back this money, I want to lead you to Christ. Because you cannot be serving in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of darkness at the same time. Mm. And before those people could kneel, I was the first one to kneel. I told him, I'm surrendering all these powers that I had. Because if your God can bring them back peacefully, then I need that God. <laughs> so <laughs> before I could finish my statement, I was fighting and breaking chairs and they allowed me to, to get through that process of deliverance and that was the end. And from that day onwards, I started serving God in truth and in spirit. Amen. There is a God that is more powerful than witches. My aim of this interview is not you to live fearing witches. is you to live knowing Jesus is more powerful. Hallelujah. Um, maybe if you have anything to add, maybe we can make a prayer. And then, if anyone is here and is not born again, what a day to give your life to Christ. Amen. I'll try and hijack them. We have an afternoon prayer rally. I'll try and hijack them and just ask them how we can pray for souls that are bound in hell. Some of us, our parents, our relatives, people we know, their destinies have been hijacked. And we know that is a fact. So we are going to have 30 minutes. That is from 3 to 3.30. And then from 3.30 to 5, this place will be chaos. We will pray until the gates of hell open up and release all that belongs to us. Some of us, our goods are locked up. Our possessions, our inheritance. Some of us even unknowingly, maybe my share to Mefungu and we don't know why we keep on struggling. I will not call it a deliverance service. Don't, so don't expect here to have a powerful man of God making people to vomit. The angels will deal with you. Buenas if you will. So I'll ask my brother if he has anything to add and then we'll make a prayer. Amen. Uh, I just want to add Lamentations chapter 5, verse 7. Lamentations, which is it's just after Jeremiah. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 7. Mm. And I'll read. Our fathers have sinned and are not, meaning they are dead. Mm. 
and we have borne their iniquities. Mm. Our fathers have sinned, and they are now dead, and we have borne their iniquities. What does that mean? Generational curses are very real. And just because you are born again does not mean that all of them have disappeared from your life. Okay? The Bible says in Exodus 34, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the third and fourth generation. Now, if we look back to our grandparents, even our own parents, if you can find a parent or a grandparent who was not born again, you can automatically assume they're in idolatry. And if they were in idolatry, the moment they visited the shrine, not only did they covenant themselves by paying for blood sacrifice of chicken, goats, or camels, or whatever they sacrificed, but they covenanted your life also. So it is important to repent, to enter into the protocol of, rep of repentance and repent for the sins of ancestors back to the fourth and the fifth generation. And what you do is you repent for their idolatry, you repent for necromancy, for divination, for idolatry, and for co any other covenant that covenanted your ancestral bloodline to the kingdom of darkness. And you ask the Father to send fire upon those altars that are speaking and to blot out the covenant because the covenant is the contract, and whatever is in that contract is what has been happening in your life. Whether it's rejection, whether it's disease, you'll find that a mother has cancer, then the daughter has cancer, even the daughter's daughter has cancer. So this thing is a curse that is ongoing. And just because you are born again, and I know 1 Corinthians 5.17 says, If ye be in Christ, you are a new creature. Mm. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It is true. And if you die... At this moment, you'll go to heaven. However, just because you're born again does not mean that the laws, ordinances, and protocols have been removed. Are you following me? Just because you're born again, if you go out there and steal and you're caught, will you not go to jail? But I thought you're saved. Mm. So it means that the laws, ordinances, and protocols are still there. And they can still affect your life. So it is important to go back through the protocol of repentance and deal with the, uh, the idolatry, the covenants of your ancestors. You repent for them, deal with the covenant, deal with the altar. Because I told you, life revolves around altars and covenants. Yes. So those altars and covenants program your life. That's why it's so important to have your altar here at church, but even have your altar there at home. Mm. Just a table where you put your Bible and you pray. And also have your altar at your place of work. They might not know what it is, but you just carry your Bible. You have a small stool there. They don't know that is an altar. And you dedicate it to the Lord. And there, it is a doorway. An altar is a doorway. It is a junction between two dimensions. And we know that the spiritual dimension controls the physical dimension. The spirit world controls the physical world. Okay? Oftentimes, you'll see something in a dream. That's why Erica was telling you, I would beat my teachers in a dream. I beat them on the eye. And when they wake up, the eye is swollen. So the spirit world is very real. It is more real than this world. Okay? So something happening in that world will manifest in this world. So if you have a dream and you see something evil happening in that world, you don't just wake up and say, hey, I had a bad, a bad dream, but ah. No, you see kitu ya kawaida. You are being shown what is happening in the spirit realm. So yours is to wake up and brakasayantolobra. I cancel that wickedness in the name of Jesus because God is showing you what is happening in the spirit realm in real time. Mm. So a witch is somewhere bewitching you right then and there. So you must wake up and deal with that wickedness. Amen. Amen. So these things are. We are sharing them so that you'll be spiritually minded. Because the Bible says to be spiritually minded is life, life and peace. Yeah, so when you are spiritually minded, you think of everything from the spiritual perspective. Amen? Amen. Amen. So altars and covenants, they program people's lives. Mm -hmm. So 
When you become wise, you begin to learn to use the altar and the covenant which God made with Abraham all those years ago to your advantage today. And that's why Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 says, If ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen? Amen. So through this covenant of the Lord Jesus Christ, you become an heir of the covenant that God made with Abraham. When, God, when Abraham built that altar, that night he slept and some terror overwhelmed him. And then he saw pieces of a bird, isn't it, on the, on the altar. It was in two pieces. And then a floating lamp. And the lamp was floating between the pieces of the, of the, of the, anim, of, of the animal, eh? of the bird. It was floating between those pieces. This was God covenanting himself with Abraham. And what does that mean, the floating lamp between the two pieces? The, the, the covenant says that if I am to break this covenant, I am to be cut into pieces like these birds that have been cut in pieces. Mm. You see? So that covenant that God has with Abraham, it is still to this day. And it is a covenant of dominion. It is a covenant of ownership. He said, to your seed, I will give as far as your eyes can see, I will give them these lands. So you're supposed to be land owners. It's part of your covenant. Mm. You're supposed to be owners. You're supposed to be walking in dominion. And if it is not happening, there is some area of darkness still at work in your life. So we preach the word and we preach kingdom to notify you of your rights in the kingdom so that you walk flooded with light. Amen? Amen. Amen. So... God bless you. We love you. Recognize, re, re, always remember, righteousness is a shield. It is a what? The shield. It's a shield. Righteousness is a shield. And holiness guarantees your future. Amen. Amen. Well, I believe we can clap for them. So, I'll allow Pastor Kevin to minister to them in the as we stand on our feet. Now you have some few prayer materials. Let me receive the worshipers. Let me receive the worshipers. Or let me usher them to the office. Roy, sing one song. I'm coming. Let me just receive them. No leaving until we say the grace. Let me just usher them. <laughs> 